I worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, we bless and worship you today. Thank you so much for the word of God that is sure and steadfast. God, we began this Bible study as you directed us in the book of Exodus. When there was trade in this country, not only this country, in other parts of Africa, that the Muslims would Islamize the region. It was heavy in this country, Nigeria. People were afraid. Some thought to run out of this country. But you said, don't fear. Go to the book of Exodus and see how I defended Israel. I am also going to defend this, this nation. I would defend my people, the Christians. Yes. Because of the few righteous in Nigeria, I will hear their cry and change my mind. The Muslims have no power. Lord, I am speaking to you today as though today we come to celebrate the date of the wicked king and uh, the war promise against the children of God. It's as though it's a day we are saying, stand and look behind you. You have crossed that Red Sea. See, that animal is lying dead that threatened our lives. Father, we are blessed. We give you glory. We give you honor. We're together. We're moving on with you. In Jesus' name we pray. We can be seated. Truly, the country was in great tension. Arrows of the devil were flying here and there, kidnapping here and there. And the rumors were thick in the air about the impending religious war and the doom of Christianity, especially in Nigeria. Yes, we had Ghana echoed about the same thing. The Lord assured us by the word of prophecy and revelation that we should not bother. He gave us 14 days to pray and we really engaged ourselves in prayer for 14 days from the um, that's uh, is it from the for which time you should know in the month of May all through to June until June 8th Praise God, there's peace everywhere. But although there is peace, the Lord has not finished his judgment. The Lord has not finished. Our Bible study today will reveal to us the Lord will still do another thing. Because he wouldn't want this thing to be repeated another time. So, I'm talking about the end of the wicked ruler and the war against God's children. The end of the wicked ruler and the war against God's children. Although the children of Israel were released from Egypt, Yes. Which was what was desired. But God Almighty knew that the battle had not finished. But let everybody know 
let the children of Israel know that the God of heaven had promised them that he was going to release them. He was going to deliver them. Now, let them consider it in retrospect. Let them look behind and see their condition then and their condition now. And know that the Lord can be trusted. Let us of this country look behind and see the state of the country then when the Lord was promising us deliverance safety and let's consider it now we shall see the faithfulness of God see it was a hard time indeed in Exodus chapter 3 verse 7 to verse 10 Exodus chapter 3 verse 7 to verse 10 and the Lord said I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their tax masters for I know their sorrows they were in a state of sorrow at this time they were in a state of bondage at this time. Tax masters were appointed over them. And he said, And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. See, in that condition, a promise was given. Many people would not take this promise because they would not believe it would, it would happen. They would not believe that God was going to be able to deliver them from the hand of terrible Pharaoh, from the hand of his taskmasters, from the hand of the Egyptians. They would not believe. And they would trouble their hearts. They would trouble their lives. If you refuse to believe what God is saying, you will just be troubling like your life. If it is congregational, your own belief means nothing. But if it is of your life that God is promising, I will do this for you. I will do this for you. And you went into, you go into unbelief, you may affect the work of God. You may affect it coming to pass. God may end up saying, oh, I would have done this and done this for her, for him, but he refused to believe. He, she refused to believe. She went into doubting. And the Bible says, He that doubted is unstable before the Lord. Let that man know that he cannot receive anything from the Lord. That is it. That is it. So, always learn to believe. When the Lord gives a promise, say amen to it. I had told you the other time, if it is too difficult, say, thou knowest, oh Lord, thou knowest. That's what Ezekiel said. God, thou knowest. So, see him now. In verse 9. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Hmm. Verse 11, And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a talking unto thee, 
that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the children of Israel out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. See them now. God was promising even the leadership. Even the leadership. There are some promises very great that you wonder, can this be? Don't go into serious doubting. Don't confess to negatively. Because the man on whom the king's head lay said, Lane said, even if the Lord will open the windows of heaven, ah, he had taken his doubting too far and he had to die for it. Are you saying even if the Lord, who made the earth? Who made man? Who made the devil? Who made the wind? Who made the waters? Can he not do what he wants? He do it according to his will among the inhabitants of men. And none say it unto him, What doest thou? So be careful. Don't take God, don't take you, this your doubting too high, too serious. When the Lord is promising his church, this is what I'm going to do, this is what I'm going to do. Revival will come. This is what I have done. He said, I don't believe it will hurt you. But see it now. Have they not left Egypt? According to promise, they had left Egypt. See them now. Out of Egypt, as the Lord has said. Now, the Lord also told them, when they doubted, he said, this thing I have said, Pharaoh will not let you go. Just as you have noticed, I will use my power and then Pharaoh will let you go. It will involve the use of power. Which power could you use upon Pharaoh? They had never known the powers of God. They had never known the powers of God. So even when God said, I will use my power, some fell as if it was a, an idle world. See, did God use his power? Yes. In Exodus chapter 6, verse 1 and verse 6, God really used his power. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go. And with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. I am going to release power. Your salvation involves power. When the Lord says, I will heal you, is power. I will deliver you. It's power. He said, I will release my power. You don't even, you can't think of it. Come. When he was speaking this, did they ever imagine that flies will flock to Egypt? Frogs will flock to Egypt. Lies. Did they think any thought like that? Did they imagine that hailstones would come from heaven? Had they even seen anything like that? So, when the Lord says, I will use my power against these Muslims, we are busy thinking, how? Which way? The, is the way. The Lord is a man of war. He knows what to do. Is there no peace? Has he not handled the matter? But he said, I still have another thing to do. So, Power was used in verse 6. Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm, with great judgment. I am the Lord. Did he do it? They didn't understand. Don't seek to understand by faith we believe by faith we understand so now how would they have known the outst outstretched arm how would they have understood the great judgments that will make them come out of the land of Egypt God said it take it so God said he would destroy your enemies take it so God says he will break your yokes take it so God says he will advance you. Take it so. God says he will promote you. Take it so. Come to down. Don't use your reasoning. 
the just shall live by faith the just shall live by faith and now was it not done and the Lord said and Pharaoh shall let you go did they ever imagine how how many times had they been to Pharaoh and Pharaoh hardened his heart how many times have Pharaoh ever said please don't come here again <laughs> and to them can this dry leave this dry man can he come to his senses and say he will come to a time that he will say we should go this proud man can he ever bow but the Lord told you he will bow he shall bow because the Lord said he shall bow look at look at it in, in Exodus chapter 12 verse 29 and 30 Exodus chapter 12 verse 29 and 30 and it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of cattle and Pharaoh rose up in the night he and all his servants and all the Egyptians and there was a great cry in, the, in Egypt for, the, for there was not a house where there was not one dead and he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said rise up and get you out forth from from the children of um, get you get you forth from among my people both ye and children of Israel and go serve the Lord and as ye, as ye have said also take your flocks and your hearts as ye have said and be gone and bless me also hallelujah but he did not say he would do it the Lord has given holiness of the great and precious promises believe them it's like that don't doubt anything what the Lord has said concerning our leader is like that what the Lord has said concerning the placement he has given to holiness revival movement is like that don't doubt it it shall come to be tomorrow shall spell it very clearly Amen. Yes. Now, I said the end of the wicked ruler and the war against God's children. In two ends, wicked ruler and war against God's children. Two things shall end together. Glory to our God. Now, See it in Exodus chapter 14, verse 1 to verse 4. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before the high heroes between Migdol and the sea, over against Zephon, before it, before it shall ye encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness had shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his host that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. Can you see? At this time, the thought had not yet come to Pharaoh. It's as if Pharaoh received an injection that gave him sleep. Or he got drunk and was not understanding his environment. He spoke in, 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 in a state of stupor. He ordered the children of Israel to go under tension and he was not himself. So, 
The children of Israel had gone. The Egyptians had escorted them, had asked them, brother, to go, bless them, give them gifts, go. Before Pharaoh would think this thought, the Lord said it to the children of Israel, to the leadership. The Lord said it. Before Pharaoh would think this thought, the Lord brought it out. Amen? Yes. The Lord brought it out. It could be Satan that sows this evil thought in Pharaoh's heart. Because actually the battle was between Satan and God. Before Satan would even come to tell Pharaoh to rise up and revive in the battle, the Lord had already told his people. What I was saying, God's revelation for our good. God reveals things that will be for our good. Most often, to save his people, he reveals it ahead of time. So that we should know and pray about it and prepare. What do you do when God reveals things to you? Are you careless? He revealed it for prayers. He revealed it to us. It was not too late then. The plan was still to come. He asked us to pray. It worked for us. Learn to pray after you received revelation. Learn to pray. Personal revelation. Let the church learn to pray. When the church receives the vision, the revelation of God concerning a danger, do that. But then what about the church that does not believe in revelation? What about that? They suffer many shipwreck. They suffer many shipwreck. There is a conference going on in America now. And it's going to finish today. Before the conference would begin, the Lord has given us a revelation that some wicked forces had come in there to operate. He gave it to us. So we began to organize prayers. I got the prayer warriors in Nigeria ready for that battle. We started praying here, calling on God. It shall not be. It shall not be. He gave it to us. Ah, see, some forces have planned themselves to disrupt this, to attack this program. Rise up and pray that I might arrest them, discomfit them, embarrass them. The Lord gave that understanding. So, what am I saying? The revelations of God are for our good. Learn to pray when the Lord gives them. Then he will give you more. See it now. Before it would even come to the heart of Pharaoh to rise and pursue the children of Israel, the Lord had told Moses, see it now. This is what the Pharaoh will do. And as a result, the Lord was, had planned how things would go. He had planned it. The children of Israel are not aware. That's why surrender your life to God. Don't be given to murmuring and complaining. Why not this? Why not in the left hand? Why not in the right hand? Why not in the front? Why not in the back? Why not up? Why not down? Full of complaints. You know, he knows the way through the wilderness. The wilderness of life. He sees ahead. The prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. That's what he, he does. So God knows when there will be difficulty in your life. He knows how to lead you this way. That's what the Bible says. In every 
everything give thanks. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You remember the story of the man that in a revelation saw himself walking by saw his footsteps by the seashore and he saw that as they were not two, they, we saw that they were not only two footsteps but they were four who is this man that was always following me and I didn't know who is this man the Lord said I was the one or rather I am the one ah, but I didn't see you you are not to see me take me by faith did I not promise I will be with you wherever you go and ah, the man rejoiced so God you were with me if had I known this all the fretting I was fretting hey I am alone assassin will come hey I am alone kidnappers will come oh I am alone I will march on snakes oh this I would have never bothered as a child of God yes you are right then in watching his footsteps he came and saw where there were only two now ah God you were not here it's only me that was here it's only me that was here ah no they are not your footsteps they were my own ah where was I you were in my shoulder those were dangerous moments. So I lifted you up to my shoulder and I crossed that, that place. And then I brought you down. Then we became four again. Now you know, see four over, over there. The Lord knows the way. Live your life peacefully. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust Him. He will direct all your ways. He will direct all your path see him now he started directing the children of israel why he had seen that the enemy would come up even before the enemy forces gathered even before they gathered he had already prepared them why in acts of apostles chapter 15 verse 18 the bible tells us Acts of Apostles, chapter 15, verse 18. The Bible says, Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. That's why I am peaceful. You know I'm supposed to have traveled to America for the program. But visa issue, I went for my visa interview and that day an emergency holiday came up on America. It had not been there before. It was just decreed into law and the, the, the visa office was closed down. I went, there was no, there was no, no I, I couldn't, I, I couldn't the, the office was closed down. So no visa, no interview. Ah, because of this knowledge that God knows his ways I was peaceful if the Lord is with me to go down there he shall make a way otherwise it is in his perfect wisdom that I should not go myself Let, I should send a team to go not myself directly so with this we don't get troubled with life. What can you do? It's God that allows you to do it. If God allows you to do it, even against me, he has a reason for allowing it. I am to go to God and say, what happened? What did you allow this person? Because he can do it. He can never do it by himself. He has not gotten the power. Satan could not touch job by himself he took permission from god so be peaceful and serve the lord all that matters is righteousness all that matters is don't be telling lies 
all that matters don't be angry for anything that some evil has been done known unto god are all his works it is god that planned that it should be done like that know it since it is outside your control since it is done already god planned it however deadly it is god has planted and he has also planned on yourself how you will not be hurt how things will go well for even the doing of that thing will work together for good for you because we're a child of god if your phone gets lost find out why did my hand my phone get lost ah come am i spending too much time on phone and God is not getting me again. That is why he allowed it to be stolen. Take it. Go and ask God whether that is the reason. Otherwise, why should your phone get lost? Don't be troubling yourself about who stole the phone. Find out why the phone left. Why the enemy came at all? Because not unto God and all his works. When the man, before, you, before the man was, it will even come to his hand to come and steal your phone. Was God not aware? Was he not aware? He was aware. Why did he not stop him? Why did he not touch you to go and pick your phone? But God kept quiet until the man came. And he took the phone. Nobody saw him. He put it in his pocket. Nobody saw him. He was going. He was moving. Nobody saw him. And the angels is completely free. Go and ask God, what happened? Maybe he would say, I saw that this phone was troubling you. I was not getting your time. I saw that it was taking you to evil side. Pornography was coming up to you. Your mind was getting polluted. I saw, oh, let me remove this phone. Otherwise, I will lose this, my child. Then, when you know so, promise God that you will not give attention to for more than him again. Promise God, you will not do that pornographic business again. Then ask him to give you money to buy a phone and wait for him. Another phone will come. Do you see how wonderful life is? Praise the Lord. So be peaceful. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Again, this God declares the end from the beginning. Look at it in the book of Isaiah, chapter 45. Isaiah chapter 45 I read verse 21 God says tell ye and bring them near let them take counsel together who had declared this from ancient time who had told it from that time have not I the Lord? And there's none God, there's no God else beside me. A just God and a Savior. There's none beside me. Yes. Chapter 46 of Isaiah, verse 10. Or rather from verse 9 and 10. Or I mean, he said, remember the former things of old, for I am God. And there's none else. I am God. There's none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. All. I declare the end, which means I see the end from today. From today, I see the end of your life. From today, I see the end of the country. If the country will be split into two, I know. And when, I know. Not of itself, I am involved in it. For a reason best known unto me, if it will. If it will not, I know. All tensions will, not, will come up. The winds will blow. The floods will hit at it. Yes. And the rains will descend. The country shall never split. I know all this. 
Therefore, don't fret yourself. Stay with me and stay in the position I give you. That tree that they are cutting, I know where it will fail at the end. Will it fail to the right or it will fail to the left? Will it fail backward or fail to the front? I know. I, I tell you the position to stand. Stand in that position. And when you stand, don't mind the shaking of the tree. I have given you the safe position. Declaring the end from the beginning. This is the God we serve. In 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 8 to verse 12. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 8 to verse 12. The Bible says, Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for Theta the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which, which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there. Not once, not twice, not twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was so troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king. But Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, tell it the king of Israel, the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. Get it? Oh, this God shall be our God forever and ever. See, the king of Syria, a neighboring king, had been warring against Israel. Warring against Israel. Then he called his servants to plan the war. So they will now say, okay, we are going down to the eastern side to attack, uh, attack the nation through the eastern side. Elisha the prophet, God told him, go and tell the king that tomorrow he should send military to the eastern side. Because the enemy has sent his people there. Let them go and overcome them, overthrow them. So, and fortify that place to ensure there is no breakthrough there. The king of Israel will send troops there and give instruction to that city, that part of the place. Let nobody come out of the outside the wall, outside the fence, because the enemies are there. But these people went in a secret way to go and ambush that place they waited not even a single person came out not even anybody come and said i want to go to farm uh -uh. they didn't know we were coming they waited there in vain and went back home what happened nobody came out nothing in fact and uh, the, the way we saw the soldiers inside the wall inside the fence it's as if they knew we were coming Oh, okay. Maybe there was an occasion there. That's where they all went there. Now, we're going now to the west. We're, tomorrow is the west. To attack the city from the west. The Lord will tell Elisha, now they have moved to the west. Go, send to fortify that side. So, Elisha told the king of Israel, now they have moved to the west. Eh? They have gone to the west again these people. He gathered his soldiers, moved them to the west and gave instruction nobody should come out. They came here secretly, Boko Haram and lied on there waiting for people to come out. When they would they open the gate through that side they would come in. No gate opened. Everywhere fortified. They saw that the soldiers were prepared. They, ah, ah, come. What happened? It became too much that the king, the king of Syria said, everybody come here. All come here. I have, I have treacherous people. Disloyal people. People I keep quiet. <laughs> They're telling my secret to the king of Syria, king of, king of Samaria. 
king of Samaria, the king of Israel, has brought some of you with money. Come here, let's locate these people. Please, take up. Which one of us is for the king of Israel? A man of wisdom and understanding. Who knows the ways of the Lord? Said, oh king, maybe he had lived in Israel before. Oh king, trouble not yourself. There is a man there, Elisha. The thing that you are thinking in your room before you came out to call us. When you were lying down and, and were doing your finger, <laughs> calculating, at that time it was reading in Israel. Everything was reading. The way you were lying down, the way you were thinking it, the thought was reading in Israel. That has been made known to the king before you gathered at us. So it is not anybody among us. That is our God. When God is ready to serve you, it's a simple thing. That's why you don't need charm. Mm, you don't need it. You don't need a smile. You don't need to join secret society for protection. You don't need to become an illuminati. Because nobody will hurt you. No, you don't need that. You don't say not do as God can do. So that's our God. Then why cry and mama? Why do you have to cry and mama when you have this God as your God forever? Why shivering at anything? When you have this God as God forever. For this God is our God. Forever and forever he will be our God. From now, even to the end. What are you troubled? Where you have this God for your God? Where should you cry? Where you have this God for your God? Exodus chapter 14, verse 10 to 12. Children of Israel, where are you fretting? Why are you afraid? Exodus 14, verse 10 to 12. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted up their, vo their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were so afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord, and they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, Yes. Hast thou taken us a way to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dared thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that was be served the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians that we should die in the wilderness. You can see weights of men. See what your provocation has brought out of your mouth. Over what God has made full provision for you. Over the work of God which he has done according to his foreknowledge. Who is to be ashamed now? You are to be ashamed. You have revealed your nakedness. You have revealed your carnality. You have revealed your faithlessness. That's why the Bible says, even if a man is a fool, if he holds his tongue, he shall be esteemed a man of wisdom. That's why the Bible says, he that keepeth his tongue, his mouth, keepeth his life. Why didn't you keep quiet? Why didn't you trust? Why are you full of murmuring? Why are you full of complaint? 
complaining over people complaining over things complaining over places complaining over damages complaining over things like that your life is complaining this is to your shame see it now where child of god don't do that anymore be peaceful everybody say it let your voice be heard be peaceful now in case it is your heart that is beaten lay hand on your heart tell it my heart be peaceful exactly god has done something already although i am not aware there's salvation in this matter there's something good on my way in this matter therefore heart be peaceful if you see your neighbor shivering like that tell him maybe it's your fellow brother tell him what elisha told his servant when he saw the enemies the syrians surround that city what did elisha say be peaceful tell your brother be peaceful tell your sister say it again say it the third time this language the lord has given us do you know that one of the angels the lord sends to me is called shalom what does that mean what does that mean shalom praise the lord that is the word of god because the lord is always telling you you don't know how precious you are in the presence of god uh -uh. you don't know isaiah chapter 41 isaiah chapter 41 i read verse 9 and verse 10 the bible says thou whom i have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof and said unto thee thou art my servant i have chosen thee and not cast thee away why are you afraid then that you will die servant i chose you i gave you a calling why are you thinking that you will not fulfill it? That you will die? Who is he going to kill you? King Ahasuerus was asking Esther. Who? Who? Eh? Who? He's thinking the type of thing that my wife will die. Who? 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 He said the wicked man is this Haman. Did Haman last through that day? Ah, ah. God is the one with you. God is the one that chose you. God is the one that is going with you. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, neither the moon by night. Why therefore are you so afraid? He says in verse, four, in verse 10, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yeah. I will help thee. Yeah. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They that shall, I mean, they shall be as nothing. And they that strive will thee. What will happen to them? They shall perish. Watch all these people making noise against holiness movement you will never hear a voice again. No, give them time and be watching them. Give them time. I pray that they will repent. Otherwise, you will never hear. In fact, you'll be reading internet. Where are those people? You won't see them again. Because judgment will clear them off. Judgment will clear them off. So be peaceful. Don't bother. Just be praying that they should repent. Otherwise, it shall not be well with them to join with the devil to speak against the righteous. To join with the devil to condemn a movement God brought to the earth. Are they not the enemies of God? Are they not the enemies of, of righteousness? So, 
the Lord says, be peaceful. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to verse 7. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to verse 7. Yes. The scripture says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. The thing is you have been calculating it by yourself. You are always trying to calculate the way out. How will it happen? Which way will I go? Which way? <laughs> I, in the physical sense, I did that calculation. We were, I, I, we were in a journey but going to a highway and I saw ahead of me in some great distance a range of mountains that arranged themselves across the road I continued going then I was calculating where this road that we are going now which way are we going to cross those mountains over there the mountain has stretched from the left we, I know we will not come and be going back to our left to come as if we're coming back, coming back to our, from where we started. And the mountain has crossed over to the right. Ah. And then this road is going. I'm seeing the road is facing the mountain. Where is the way for this mountain? Where are you bordering? Is, is that a road you are following? Or are you in the bush path? Come, are you in the highway on the bush path? You are in the highway. What are you bothering over what has been calculated already? That road. Don't mind the mountains you're seeing. You will soon be at the backside of the mountain. Praise the Lord. Don't bother and be calculating and calculating. The Lord has finished the calculation about your marriage. In case you are looking, no girl. In fact, I see here nobody is fit to be my wife here. I look at you. And you two who have master's degree are checking up. Who finished from degree here? Who finished from, who finished from university in this place? Hey, nobody. Let's pray that God should give us, uh, give uh, your husbands. You say, I don't have anyone here. <laughs> so you don't want to pray anymore. Is your calculation. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Don't use wisdom sensual wisdom. It will become sin to you. Because you are thinking that, ah, I can't find anybody here. Oh, if I don't do it like that, if, if I don't work out myself, work it out for myself. You see what the children of Lot did. They felt they would never see me again. They felt. They didn't know. Abraham his heart was with Lord, and Abraham would trace Lord. Because Abraham had interceded for Lord, Abraham would trace Lord and discover him. And Abraham had how many servants? What about the children he gave birth to through the other woman? The other uh, uh, woman. What about that? What about the children of other ones? They're there. What about the servants of Abraham? Mighty servants. They're there. But their heart said they shall not find me again. So let's make our father sleep with us and they produce bastards. Can you see that? They went into iniquity. Shameful iniquity. Why? They lean on their own to their own understanding. They acted according to their own wisdom. How did it happen now? The Lord said, the Moabite and the Ammon should not come to the congregation of the Lord. So, please stay in faith. Don't do those things. Now, another thing. Let's go back to Exodus chapter 14. 
the enemy revived and renewed his wickedness. Exodus chapter 14. I read from verse 3 to verse 9. Exodus 14 verse 3. And Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness had shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them. And Pharaoh, I, he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his host that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. God had not finished his work. Although there's peace, Muslims are not talking again, but God will do something again. He has not finished. He, has not, he cannot sit down until he's finished. He was sitting down and they caused him to start running. He will finish his running and finish what he was running for. That's it. That is it. He had not finished. He said, see, f go this way, encamp in this way, by the Red Sea, and mountains around you at the back. The only place that shall open is the way to Egypt. And it was all round, you are covered. The Pharaoh shall say, ah, the wilderness has caught them up. They have entered into a cage. Ahead of them is the Red Sea. How can they cross the Red Sea? No ship for them. Even if there were ship, how many will the ship carry per, per time? See mountains that are on every side. They cannot climb it. They cannot climb it. Pharaoh shall say so. And then... It went on. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh. I will harden his heart. I've explained this. Pharaoh's heart was like that already. I will allow his heart to exercise itself. That's what it means. I will harden Pharaoh's heart. It means I will allow Pharaoh's heart to have opportunity to exercise itself. Because Pharaoh automatically, before God came into meeting with him in this contest, was a hardened man. Was a hard-hearted man. God could have broken through it, but God said no. I will allow it. He broke through it now and the children of Israel came out. They had the children of Israel came out. He said, go, 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 go. But his nature is such that he, his heart is hard. So I will allow his heart to exercise itself again. That means I will harden Pharaoh's heart. Yes. And Pharaoh will, ex will want to pursue you so that I will finish the battle. I want to end up with Pharaoh, the wicked ruler. He has been so wicked. He has affected so many people. I will end up with him. I want to end up with pride. He had exercised pride to the point of saying, who is the Lord? I'm going to handle him. He oppressed my people too much. So I just want his judgment is dead. And all those people that agreed with him, submitted to him, I would want to clear them off. So that's so that Egyptians may know the ones that remain at home may know that I am the Lord. They will respect me forever. They will respect the God of Israel forever. Oh Lord, do it again in this country. Say, say it out in yourself. 
No, let things not be quiet. Sufficiently, I know there's no war, but no more than that. The suffering Christians have passed through. The deprivation of important positions. The retrenchment from war. The oppression of kidnapping. All these things. Father, finish your war. God, finish the battle. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled. And the heart of Pharaoh and of his servant was turned against the people. And they said, Why have we done this? Were we sleeping? What happened? That we have left Israel go from us. Why? Come. I told you, they gave Pharaoh anesthesia. You know, if you want to do operate somebody, what do you do? You give him anesthesia. Is that so? Or anesthetics? What do we call it? So that he, he, he can lie as if he, he can sleep away. Then you can walk on him. He won't feel it. <laughs> That's what God did to Pharaoh and his people. But do you know that when you sleep, sleep, you recover and start feeling the pain? Pharaoh has woken up from sleep. And he's feeling the pain of the oppression that took place in his life. Say, ah, ah, what happened? Why am I feeling pain? What, what happened that the children of Israel left? Then, yes. Verse 6. Let's read verse 5 again. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this that we have let Israel go from serving us? Can you see? It's not where has he done, uh, have, have, uh, has, where have I done this? Pharaoh was not alone in the evil plans against Israel. He had a, he had a cabinet that were working with him. He had a cabinet that were fighting with him, warring against Israel together. The ruler is not alone. There are governors, there are ministers, there are various kings that are also joined together in this battle. See it here now. Yes. And they, ru and they, were, they were boasting. And verse 6, and he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And, and took his people with him. His chariot, his people ready to go and overtake Israel. Punish them, kill them. Turn them back to Egypt again. They are operating together. The Lord knows all those governors in Nigeria that are rising against his name. The Lord knows all those ministers in Nigeria that are rising against his name. He knows them. He will handle every man according to his works. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. Chariot. It is like, um, what do we call this? It's like jets. Fighting jets. F Pharaoh had 600 fighting jets. And special pilots trained on them to fly them for war. So that Egypt was recognized as a nation of war. In fact, other nations were seeking refuge in Egypt. They were hiring soldiers, fighters from Egypt pay and take and one fight so it was the world power it could stand for america today and the lord hardened the heart of pharaoh king of egypt he the lord allowed the heart of pharaoh to be as it has been to exercise itself yes Yes. And he pursued after the children of Israel. 
and the children of Israel went out with an high hand. The, and the children of Israel went out with an high hand. They went out. They went out speedily anyway. They went out and the Lord also did great things to set them free. And they were going with, with strength. They went with all their strength. Going with strength. But the Egyptians pursued after them. All the horses. The chariots of Pharaoh. And his horsemen. And his army. And overtook them. Encamping by the sea. Beside Pihar Hero. Before Belzephon. Although the children of Israel really speeded as they were going. Because they wouldn't want Egypt to pursue them. So they were already going. But see, they were having young now. They were having animals. How much people would they, would they uh, undertake? These ones, fighters, with the speed of what? Chariots, horses, run after them. And overrun them and pitch ahead of them the the pitch ahead of them yes and it it and uh, so the pitch ahead of the Egypt of the children of Israel and when Pharaoh Junior and started coming in that side because that is the only space. No, the mountain has covered the other side, and ahead of them was the river. So the, at the, I, I, the children of them were facing the Red Sea with mountain in the left and in the right. Where were they going to go again? The only place is to, to, the, to climb the mountain. Will they climb? Or to cross the sea. That was the only escape. The Bible says, And the children of Israel lifted up their eyes. And behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were so afraid. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. They cried unto the Lord. They would have stopped there. But they started complaining. This God, I told you that you should not take him seriously. Eh? I told you that this person, do we know him before? It's not in Egypt he came and said he's our God. See now. He says he's our God. He really poured down power. But the power cannot finish our salvation. Now we're going to die. What is the benefit of his power? Now we will die. Better we had remained in Egypt. You know, if you want to know what is in a man. Let it be when something happened to him. Is then that man will tell you what is inside his stomach. He can be laughing. Just laughing. Happy, happy. You will say you are a good man. Hey, who is like you? I'm telling you, you are a good man. Yes. I love you. Yes, you are a great man. You are wonderful. They are talking that thing. Let them talk it. Let something happen. Then we will know what heart that person has. Look at it in the book of Luke, chapter 2. In verse 20, um, from verse 25 and behold there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon and the same man was just and devout waiting for the consolation of Israel 
and the Holy Ghost was upon him and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ and he came by the Spirit into the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law then took him took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said Lord now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word for mine eyes have seen the sal thy salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people a light to, to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel and Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him and Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother behold this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel and for a sign which shall be spoken against yea a sword shall pierce through their own, thy own soul also that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed a sword will pierce to the heart even yours too as for yours you will see him in the cross standing by the cross to see him hung there to know what he will say to God what will you say to God when you see your son hung on the cross we will know whether that heart is virtuous or no through this child, a sword shall pierce through to, to, to the Jews, the hearts of men, the hearts of the elders and the rulers. You will know that the secrets of the hearts be revealed. Listen, God is interested for you to know yourself. That's why he allows some things to happen. To know what you will say. God pass you through the wilderness because he is proving you to know what is in you to know whether you will serve the Lord or no whether you will obey God to know the secret and to to make you know yourself when somebody just comes and splashes water upon you when you are going to church we will know the heart that is going to church that day. That heart you are carrying, uh, Jesus, we worship you in the church. Hallelujah. That water that splashed on you, we will see the heart. <laughs> if that heart is not original, you will do your hands like this. Look at you. You are an idiot. You see me dressing like this, and you come and splash water on me. Go will punish you. I say, look at me now. Come down, we will see ourselves. Eh? <laughs> Yes. But what if you don't have that evil? If they slap you on one cheek, you will turn the other. You will turn the other. The hearts of the two harlots were exposed by the threat of danger. Bring the sword. Let us cry. Let's split the child into two. Give the head to someone and give the, the tail to another. The mother of the child said, No! The yearning of the mother. Give it to her. No, let them divide it. Let it neither be my own nor your own. You know, her? it's in difficulty. Don't say it's because they pushed me. That's why I did that. No, that's how you are. God wants you to know the infirmities of your life, to clean yourself thoroughly. Because these deaths in you will hinder eternal life. And you're not aware the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? But God tried the reins. He is the one that exposes the heart. Yes, she did this. She did that. He did this. He did that. Not those things. It's who you are. It's who you are. Is who you are. If you know this, when trouble comes, please don't allow trouble to mean anything to you. It is examination time to know what is in you. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, 
Deuteronomy chapter 8 I read from verse 1 all the commandments which I commanded this day shall ye observe to do that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers and thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what is in thine heart whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no and he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna which thou knowest not neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord that man live that's what the Lord did it he passed you through this wilderness where there are beasts there are serpents it was a hot time. Many times, no water to drink. Many times, no water. Oh, snakes biting you. Many, the sun being hot. Many things. Just to know who are these people. Who are they? To know what is in you. How will you react if a thing like this happens? The Lord wants to cleanse you. Therefore, when you see this thing in your life, don't say somebody provoked you. It's nobody. Don't say it. If there were no such heart, nobody would have provoked it. Somebody else will react differently. Somebody else. The two of you are sitting, standing by a mango tree. There comes a man, slaps this one and slaps the other one and is waiting to no reaction. You will react according to your hearts. The other will say, You slap me, receive, receive. Acrobatic. While the other will say, Oh, bro, God bless you. What happened? Did I offend? You see two hearts? Which one is your own? Why are you blaming your fault on another? Why are you blaming your fault on another? Who told you that if it were another person, he would react like that way. No. Please, walk on your heart. That circumstance revealed you to yourself. It showed how much work you still need to do in your life to come to the perfect state. God wants you. Humble down. Don't blame another. Blame yourself. That you have not prayed enough. You have not confessed enough. You have not committed enough. Blame yourself and look to God for your salvation, for your cleansing, thorough cleansing and sanctification. So you see these children of Israel crying, did you bring us here? They had forgotten the goodness of God. They had forgotten the kindness of God. All forgotten. The mystery of God. But Moses knew the difference. Moses had been with God. Moses knew the voice of God. Moses knew the ways of God. Moses had gone away from doubt. He is assured. God has told me. God has assured me. Before it came to pass, I will tell you. For the Lord does not do a thing until he reveals to his servant the prophet. Moses had received the mind of God. So see what Moses was telling the people here. In verse 13, and verse 14, and Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. The Lord, Moses had been coming with God. The Lord has been revealing his mind to Moses. The Lord, so he knows he knows that it is not the end. He had proved the faithfulness of God. He had been over. Moses had graduated from that school. <laughs> he had graduated. Do you remember when he went to Pharaoh at the first time? And told Pharaoh, Pharaoh added to the bondage of the children of Israel. Moses turned to the Lord. You deceive me. 
You tell me that I should, you told me I should go and tell the people. I told them the the work became worse. <laughs> I'm telling you, I think you should leave me alone. You said you should go and tell them. Moses had finished his own. <laughs> and the Lord changed and shot him. The Lord manifested this. The Lord manifested that according to his plan. And Moses said, Sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. I didn't know. So Moses had finished. It's you now. What I know you don't know. I know God. I know his ways. So I will not react the way you're reacting. No. Because I, I have followed him in his word. I have known the secrets of God. So I won't react that way. I will react differently. Because understanding shall keep me discretion shall preserve me in the way of righteousness so that is the word you need to know so fear not hold yourself salvation shall come surely from the law it's God behind it don't mind what you see we walk by faith and not by sight don't mind what the sickness is doing it shall die as the Lord has told you that is the answer Believe the Lord and ye shall be established. Believe his prophets and ye shall prosper. And verse 15, and it came to pass. When Pharaoh would hardly, sorry, verse 15, the Bible says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward, march on. But where are we marching to? We are marching to the Red Sea. Is there no space to march? March until you are about entering to the Red Sea. I say, what I shall do? Tell Israel that they should move forward. But lift thou up the rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground to the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians and they shall follow them and I will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his host upon his chariots and upon his horsemen and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh upon his chariots and upon his horsemen Moses stretch hand on that sea Something will happen. It shall be divided. The children of Israel should enter and be moving. I will tell, I will allow the children of the Egyptians, I will allow them to operate according to their hearts. They shall be so mad that they will not know that this miracle of the God of Israel, they are not worthy of it. They will think as if it is a natural thing that they took and partake. No, bread is for the children. Bread is for children. Is not for hirelings. No, the blessings of God are for his children. They are not for sinners. Sinners is judgment. Now, they move forward. He said, that's what the Lord uh, began to do. In verse 23, and the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea. Even all years. Let's read verse. Uh, okay, I read from verse 19. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went be behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it, came, it, it, and it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel and it was a cloud and darkness to them but it gave light by night to this so that the one came not near the other all the night and Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided and the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea 
upon the dry ground and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left and the egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea even all pharaoh's horses his chariots and his horsemen now get it the two come they became very close to each other they were seeing themselves now the lord said move just be moving tell them to be moving forward to face to the sea the angel of the lord brought a deep cloud there was a sudden night that fell upon the egyptians thick cloud and it became a complete darkness in the sight of egyptians because the lord needed to stop the two companies for a time there was light in the sight of israel seeing their front in the sight of the egyptian complete darkness nobody would move and the lord needed that time for a standstill between the two companies because the wind he had commanded the wind to come and keep blowing the sea it was a great and mighty sea so the wind was pushing the water and it took the wind all that night it took the wind all that night to blow up the water split and split the sea so that they stood up and congealed then there was a light in the sight of israel so they started marching the israel watch wonders give a clap of hand to jesus <laughs> hallelujah amen israel watched wonders so they started following and entering this big dry ground now and we're crossing everybody was crossing it took time for about six million people to cross the red sea and as long as they were crossing the red sea deep darkness remained in the among the egyptians they could not move maybe the third night suddenly came so they were waiting for day they could i'm telling you the lord is a man of war i said the lord is a man of war so the women children of israel all crossed over darkness rolled away from the children of egypt they saw that hey the people have crossed instead of coming to their senses and say ah uh, ah uh, 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 i will not go ah uh, ah uh, this thing i cannot tell god is inside they didn't remember that because god will wipe them off so they also started pursuing they were running so the race was wide enough to allow all the companies of pharaoh pharaoh and his six thousand chariots and the horse and the horses and the foot soldiers all of them entered into the red sea uh, and were also marching they were not even uh, they were not in their senses to know that this is water standing uh, how did this thing happen this is mystery they were not even thinking like that their hearts have been hardened. They could not sense miracle. Now, it came to pass, verse 24, and it came to pass that in the morning watch, amen, verse 23, and the Egyptian pursued and went in after them to, to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, was mean and it came to pass that in the morning watch the lord looked unto the host of the egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the egyptians and took off the chariot wheels that they drove them heavily so that the egyptians said let us flee from the face of Israel. For the Lord fighted for them against the Egyptians. You know what the Lord did? When they had all entered into the sea, on the Lord now punctured the tire of their wheel. All of them, their tires were punctured. They started rolling. They were rolling. The thing was going, ah, something's happening here. Since it's not only one chariot all the 600 chariots no air inside <laughs> no air inside their, their wheels it's like driving your vehicle no air in front tires no air in the back tires ah, where will you go 
And it's not only that one vehicle, it's all the vehicle for following the president. All the vehicle. Will you not know that danger is ahead? Is then they started sensing that ah danger is ahead. Let us go back. Distance, the back is a distance. How will they turn and go back? They will trick them. How are they going to do it? So all enter there. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength. When the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it. And the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the horses of Pharaoh that came into the sea. After them, there remained not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea. And the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore and Israel saw that great war which the Lord did upon the Egyptians and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses give a clap of him to Jesus <laughs> yes the end of the wicked ruler and the war against God's children. Pharaoh is gone. All instruments of war, all men of war, all war experts, all perished. How many years will it take Israel to recover? Egypt to recover? Don't touch the Lord. Don't show rebellion to the Lord. That's why I told you, if the Muslims will show stubbornness, the law will handle them. I'm telling you. And they will not recover. Yes. That is our God. And as for you, what did Israel do? Had they known it, would they have been crying? Would they have been complaining? No. They would have been in peace. Be peaceful. It is uh, dead. Miriam started singing song. The children of Israel started singing song. Yes, when this thing happened, the Lord has put a song in their mouth. God will do it for you. God will do it for you. In the book of Psalm 40, verse 1 to verse 3, Psalm 40, verse 1 to verse 3, the Bible says, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. He had put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is that man that make it the Lord his trust and respected not the proud, though such as turn aside to lies. Blessed are you that make God your trust. It shall be well. It shall be well with your life. It shall be well with your family. It shall be well with the church. It shall be well with your ministry. Rise up and let us rejoice in the Lord. The Lord will end up everything. The wicked ruler and war plant against the children of God. All these things shall end up. It shall end up. It shall end up. All those plans against your life shall come to an end. The enemies shall be drowned. The enemies shall be drowned. And you shall be free. You shall be free. You, we are made free in this country. Everybody say we are free. We are free. God has made us free. Go ahead and worship him. Worship. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. 
Thank you, Jesus. We worship. You have made us free. You have made us free. I am free. I've been set free by the grace of God. I am free. No more in fear anymore. I am free. I've been set free by the power of God. I am free. I'm free indeed. Praise God, I'm free. I've been set free by the grace of God. I am free. No more in sorrow anymore. I am free. I've been set free by the power of God. I am free. I'm free indeed. Brethren, you're free. You've been set free by the power of God. You are free. No more in bondage anymore. You are free. You've been set free by the power of God. You are free. You're free indeed. Praise God, you're free. You have been set free by the grace of God. You are free. No more in pains anymore. You are free. You have been set free by the word of God. You are free. You are free indeed. Praise God, we are free. We have been set free by the grace of God. We are free. No more in bondage anymore. We are free. We have been set free by the word of God. We are free. We are free indeed. Thank you, Jesus. We are free. Pharaoh and the, his warriors are gone. The Lord will wipe out those people that are rising up against his children in this nation. Thank you, Father. Worship you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We trust you. We believe you. We are free. We are free. Give the cup of ring of freedom to God in heaven and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages, or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com God bless you For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are the living Savior.
I believe you, Lord, cause you 